We're back in breathtaking Sri Lanka after a couple of years, this time with an amazing crew of global influences. Singaporean friends Dorothy, at Dotso, and Dion, Russian pals Katie, at Katya underscore me underscore, and Alex, at Atmalex, my talented photographer brother Altu, at Kyrenian, the renowned Spanish photographer David, at David Rockaberti, and Shawmi, Alpgalip, at Alpgalop, on Instagram. Join us as we uncover the hidden gems and unforgettable experiences this 10-day itinerary has to offer. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video, and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more adventures. Let's dive into the magic of Sri Lanka together. We enjoyed a smooth and comfortable flight with Qatar Airways, traveling from Larnaca International Airport in Cyprus to Bandaranaike International Airport in Colombo, with a brief stop at Hamad International Airport in Doha. Upon our arrival in Colombo, we were warmly welcomed by the Sri Lanka Tourism and Promotion Bureau offices at the airport. Afterward, we headed to the iconic Galley Face Hotel to rest and recharge before our adventure kicks off the next day. Please note that a visa is required for Sri Lanka, available online for $50 or on arrival for $60, and if you plan to fly a drone, be sure to apply for permission a few weeks in advance. Additionally, check customs regulations for items like cigarettes and alcohol, and from the airport, you can conveniently take a taxi, Uber, or pre-arranged transfer to your destination. We kicked off our first day in Colombo with a sumptuous breakfast at the Galley Face Hotel, enjoying luxurious accommodations and stunning views of the Indian Ocean right in the heart of the city. Our next stop was the iconic Lotus Tower, the tallest building in South Asia, where we were treated to breathtaking panoramic views of Colombo from the top. We then immersed ourselves in the vibrant atmosphere of Petar Market, exploring a variety of shops offering everything from fashion to everyday essentials. The Red Mosque or Jamie Al Alpha Mosque, with its striking architecture, was a must-see, offering unique photo opportunities. Islam in Sri Lanka is practiced by a significant minority, with Muslims making up about 10% of the population, primarily concentrated in the eastern, northern, and western provinces, where they have a rich history and cultural presence. To wrap up our day, we visited the modern lakeside area, where we admired the serene reflections of the Gangaramaya Sima Malacca Buddhist temple on the water. Buddhism is the predominant religion in Sri Lanka, practiced by around 70% of the population, and it plays a central role in the country's culture, history, and daily life, with numerous ancient temples and rituals deeply rooted in Theravada Buddhism. This combination of old and new Colombo left us in awe of the city's rich diversity and beauty. We concluded our day at the Galley Face Hotel with a sumptuous open buffet dinner and a comfortable, restful stay. On our second day in Colombo, we started by visiting Richmond Castle, a hidden gem located about 45 kilometers away, a scenic 1.5 hours drive from the city. This majestic yet abandoned mansion offered a glimpse into the past, and with the help of an official guide, we explored its richly detailed interiors and strolled through the lush garden surrounding the estate. Afterward, we traveled 27 kilometers, approximately an hour's drive, to the Lunaganga estate, the former country residence of the famous Sri Lankan architect Jeffrey Bawa, who is renowned for pioneering tropical modernism. At Lunaganga, we indulged in a fine dining lunch overlooking the tranquil lake, an experience that perfectly complemented the estate's serene beauty. Following lunch, we took a guided tour of the estate, capturing stunning photos of the picturesque surroundings. Lunaganga Estate, now operating as a boutique hotel, is a testament to Bawa's architectural genius, blending indoor and outdoor spaces seamlessly with the natural environment. This visit allowed us to appreciate not only the aesthetic appeal of Bawa's work but also its lasting influence on contemporary architecture in Sri Lanka. We ended our day at the Galley Face Hotel with breathtaking sunset views over the Indian Ocean, relaxing before our long drive to the central province of Sri Lanka the next day. After breakfast, we embarked on a scenic 170km drive from Colombo to the central province, which took us around four hours. Along the way, we took a refreshing coffee break at Barista Coffee, the island's most popular local coffee brand. Once we arrived in the region, we checked in at Jetwing Ville Uyana, where we would be staying for the next three nights. After enjoying a delicious lunch at the hotel, we set off on a 60km drive, about an hour and 15 minutes journey, to the Palonarua ancient site. 
Kolona Ruwa, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is a treasure trove of Sri Lankan history, with well-preserved ruins that date back to the 10th century. The site is famous for its impressive stupas, intricate stone carvings, and the iconic Gal Vihara rock temple featuring statues of the Buddha. Exploring Palona Ruwa, we were transported back in time, marveling at the grandeur of Sri Lanka's ancient civilization. We concluded our day back at Jetwing Viluyana, enjoying a fantastic dinner before retiring to our private villas, complete with a swimming pool, for a restful and luxurious stay. We began our day with a perfect breakfast at Jetwing Viluyana, enjoying the picturesque view of the lake, where a resident female crocodile occasionally makes an appearance. Afterward, we explored the resort grounds, immersing ourselves in the natural surroundings and spotting playful monkeys in the trees. I then indulged in some relaxing time at the resort's gym and spa complex. My morning was topped off with a blissful session of sunbathing and a refreshing swim in the private pool of my villa, setting the stage for an exciting day ahead. Following a leisurely morning and delicious lunch at the hotel, we made our way to Minaria National Park, a 22km drive that took about 30 minutes. We embarked on a wildlife safari in two jeeps hired from a local tour company known for its professional and knowledgeable guides. Throughout the safari, we encountered a variety of wildlife, including monkeys, water buffaloes, and numerous bird species, but the highlight was undoubtedly the elephants. These majestic creatures roamed the park in large family groups, offering us an incredible opportunity to observe their social interactions. An interesting fact we learned was about the cattle egrets that accompany the elephants during feeding time, taking advantage of the insects and worms stirred up by the elephants' movements. The safari, lasting around four hours, provided us with unforgettable moments as we admired the grace and beauty of these animals in their natural habitat. The tour's cost ranges from $70 to $120, depending on the group size. After the safari, we returned to our hotel and were treated to a special poolfront dinner organized for our group, featuring a delicious full-course meal. The Jetwing Viluyana is also home to the elusive Loris, a nocturnal primate that can often be spotted during special night safaris offered by the resort, providing guests with a unique and rare wildlife experience. We wrapped up the day by relaxing in our private villas, soaking in the peaceful atmosphere of nature. With an early hike planned for the next day, we turned in early for a good night's sleep. Early in the morning, before sunrise, we departed from Jetwing Viluyana and headed to Pidurangala Rock, a 20-minute, 10-kilometer drive. We climbed to the top of Pidurangala Rock to witness the breathtaking sunrise views of Siguria Rock, also known as Lion Rock Fortress, which is Sri Lanka's most famous landmark. Siguria Rock, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, was once the royal palace of King Kashyapa in the 5th century and is renowned for its ancient frescoes and stunning architecture. On our way back down, we also visited the Cave Temple, which is home to a large reclining Buddha statue and ancient paintings. After our morning adventure, we returned to the hotel and enjoyed a leisurely breakfast while watching the resident crocodile in the lake. Following breakfast, we took some time to relax at our villas, soaking up the sun and taking a refreshing dip in the pool. Later, we headed to the Eco Pavilion Hotel and Restaurant for a traditional culinary demonstration and lunch. There, we learned how to prepare pol roti, a traditional Sri Lankan flatbread, cooked on a wood-fired stove. After the culinary experience, we indulged in a variety of Sri Lankan dishes, savoring the rich flavors of the local cuisine. We finished our meal with delicious desserts and fresh fruits. The Eco Pavilion Hotel also offers budget accommodations, including private rooms and shared dormitories, making it a great option for travelers. In the afternoon, we visited the town center of Siguria for a coffee break at Barista. We strolled around the lively streets, filled with shops, cafes, and restaurants, soaking in the local atmosphere. Upon returning to the hotel, we took some time to rest in the afternoon. That evening, the hotel organized a special dinner for us in nature, featuring a local culinary demonstration. The setting was magical, with ground seating and fire torch lighting surrounding us. We experienced Sri Lankan delicacies in a sophisticated and serene atmosphere. We ended our last day in the central province with a good night's rest, preparing for our journey to the mountainous region of Yuva province in Sri Lanka. Early in the morning, we left Jetwing Viluyana for a 200km, 5-hour drive to Nuwara Aliya to catch the scenic train to Hapitale. 
Nuwara Aliyah, often referred to as Little England, is a charming town in Sri Lanka's central highlands, known for its cool climate, colonial architecture, and lush tea plantations. From Nanu Woya Station, we boarded a train for the journey to Hapitale, a route famous for its breathtaking mountainous views. Scenic train journeys in Sri Lanka are a must experience, offering stunning landscapes of rolling hills, tea estates, and misty forests. The train ride from Nanu Woya Station to Hapitale takes maximum two hours depending on weather conditions, covering approximately 52 kilometers. Train tickets range from $5 to $20, depending on the class, and it's advisable to book online in advance to secure seats, especially during peak seasons. Upon arriving in Hapitale, our first stop was lunch at the Olympus Plaza Hotel, which offered magnificent views of the surrounding hills. After lunch, we visited St. Andrew's Church, a quaint and historic church that also provides panoramic views of Hapitale's lush landscapes. St. Andrew's Church is a colonial-era church known for its beautiful architecture and serene atmosphere. We also took some time to watch a local cricket game, immersing ourselves in the island's most beloved sport. Finally, we arrived at Garfield Bungalow, where we would stay for the next three nights. Garfield Bungalow offers luxurious homestay accommodations with seven elegantly appointed rooms, cozy interior and exterior sitting areas, beautifully landscaped gardens, and delectable culinary options. The bungalow staff welcomed us warmly with an evening by the fireplaces and a selection of drinks. We then enjoyed a sumptuous dinner in a setting reminiscent of the Godfather movie, adding a unique and cozy ambience to our meal. After a long and fulfilling day, we retired to our rooms for a good night's sleep, eager to explore more of Hapitale the following day. We began our day with a delicious breakfast at Garfield Bungalow, savoring the fresh mountain air and the serene morning vibes of the Sri Lankan highlands. The peaceful yet exciting atmosphere set the perfect tone for the day's adventures. Our exploration of Hapitale started with a visit to the historic Adisham Bungalow. Built in 1931 by Sir Thomas Villiers, a British planter, this beautiful stone mansion reflects the grandeur of colonial architecture. Today, Adisham Bungalow serves as a monastery and houses a small museum, offering visitors a glimpse into its storied past. It's well worth a visit to experience the colonial history of Sri Lanka and to admire the well-preserved heritage and stunning gardens. After our visit, we headed to Bomburu Ella Waterfall, a scenic 40-kilometer drive that took about an hour and a half from Hapitale. Upon arrival, the local authorities warmly welcomed us, and we enjoyed a traditional lunch together at a nearby restaurant. After lunch, we took a stroll around the Bomburu Ella Center before starting our hike to the waterfall. The hike itself is moderately challenging, with rocky paths and some steep sections, so it's essential to be prepared. Along the way, we were treated to stunning views of lush greenery, wildflowers, and the occasional glimpse of wildlife. However, we had to be cautious of leeches, which are common in the area, especially after rainfall. Bomburu Ella Waterfall, the widest in Sri Lanka, cascades down in multiple streams, creating a mesmerizing and powerful sight. We spent some unforgettable moments at the waterfall, where we were also treated to an impressive martial arts demonstration by Jai Wira Master, adding a unique cultural experience to our visit. When we returned to Garfield Bungalow, they had arranged an evening garden fireplace party for us, complete with shared platters and alcoholic cocktails, perfect for unwinding after a long day. We enjoyed the warmth of the fire in the cool mountain air, sharing stories and laughter. Dinner followed, featuring traditional Sri Lankan culinary delicacies that delighted our taste buds. We ended our second day in Hapitale with a restful night's sleep, surrounded by the peaceful ambience of the town. We started the day with a traditional breakfast at Garfield Bungalow, savoring the fresh mountain air and the serene beauty of the location. The peaceful morning set a perfect tone for the day's adventures. Next, we headed to one of the largest tea plantations in the region, the Kellybed Tea Factory. Owned by Agarapathana Plantations, the factory is just one kilometer away from Hapitale town. It welcomes both foreign and local visitors daily from 8 am to 5 pm, with a tour costing only 500 Sri Lankan rupees per person. During our visit to the tea plantation, we observed the plantation workers meticulously collecting tea leaves. The majority of these workers are women, highly skilled at picking leaves with impressive speed to maximize efficiency. We learned that these workers earn an average of $5 to $6 per day. The collected tea leaves are weighed and recorded at stations by the authorities, ensuring accuracy and fairness. 
At these stations, they also brew and serve fresh tea, allowing us to taste the product of their hard work. Sri Lanka is renowned for its tea plantations, being one of the top tea producers in the world. The country ranks as the fourth largest tea producer globally, known for its high-quality salon tea, which is characterized by its rich flavor and bright, brisk qualities. The tea from Sri Lanka is celebrated for its distinct aroma and taste, making it a favorite among tea connoisseurs worldwide. After the plantation visit, we headed to Hapitale Town Center to explore its lively streets. We enjoyed shopping in the bustling center and picked up some fresh, locally grown fruits. As the day came to an end, we returned to Garfield Bungalow and attended a sunset fireplace cocktail in the garden. The owners then organized a barbecue dinner for us, where we relished our last evening in Hapitale, creating wonderful memories. We concluded the day with a good night's sleep, preparing ourselves for the long journey to Nagombo the next day. We started the day with a perfect breakfast at Garfield Bungalow, followed by a heartfelt goodbye photo and filming session with the staff. Then, we embarked on a scenic 5-hour, 180-kilometer drive from Hapitale to Nagombo. Upon arriving in Nagombo, we checked in at the Jetwing Beach Hotel, a beautiful beachfront property located in the Nagombo Beach area. We enjoyed a relaxing lunch at the hotel's beachside restaurant before everyone had free time to unwind by the beach, swim in the pool, or take in the picturesque views of the Indian Ocean. Nagombo Beach is a popular destination for both locals and tourists, known for its golden sands and vibrant atmosphere. Nagombo itself plays a significant role in Sri Lanka's tourism, offering a gateway to the country's coastal beauty and rich culture. In the evening, the hotel organized a beachfront dinner for us, featuring a delicious selection of local and international dishes. We ended the evening with tasty desserts before heading back to our rooms, ready for our last day in Sri Lanka. Early in the morning, before breakfast, we headed to the Nagombo fish market with the first light of dawn to experience the vibrant fishing culture of Sri Lanka. Fishing is deeply ingrained in Sri Lankan life, with generations of fishermen relying on the rich waters surrounding the island. The market was bustling with activity as fishermen brought in their fresh catch from colorful boats docked nearby. The abundance of fish and seafood at the Nagombo fish market was impressive, offering a variety of species that reflect the richness of the Indian Ocean. Fish and seafood are staples in the Sri Lankan diet, consumed frequently and featured prominently in local cuisine. We thoroughly enjoyed our time at the market, capturing the lively local vibes and the fascinating process of bringing in the day's catch. After our visit to the market, we returned to the hotel for a hearty breakfast and spent a relaxing day at the Jetwing Beach Hotel. We enjoyed the pristine sands of Nagombo Beach and refreshed ourselves at the hotel's poolside. Later, the hotel organized a traditional culinary experience for us in the garden, where our friends got hands-on with cooking Sri Lankan-style spicy prawn and crab dishes. We tasted the delicious results of their efforts and enjoyed a lunch featuring these flavorful meals. In the afternoon, we visited San Sebastian Church, one of the prominent churches in Nagombo. This stunning Gothic-style church, built in the early 20th century, is a testament to the strong Christian heritage in the area. Christianity has a significant presence in Sri Lanka, especially in regions like Nagombo, where many locals practice the faith. After the church visit, we took an evening stroll through the Nagombo Beach Market area, exploring shops filled with local handicrafts. We bought some unique souvenirs and gifts for our families, cherishing the last moments of our trip. That evening, we gathered with our friends for a final dinner at the Jetwing Beach Hotel, reflecting on the incredible experiences we shared throughout our journey. Late that night, we headed to the airport to catch our Qatar Airways flight back to Cyprus, with a stopover in Doha. This trip was truly unforgettable, filled with memorable moments that captured the essence of Sri Lanka. It's no wonder we live by the motto, you will come back for more. Thank you for joining us on this unforgettable 10-day journey through Sri Lanka. If you enjoyed the adventure, don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with your friends. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more exciting travel itineraries and experiences around the world.